Today we're taking a look at one of the ships I consider to be in the top tier of all ships in this game, and that is the Wooster. And this ship has been out for a while, and honestly, I thought it would receive some nerfs when it came out. Truly, I did. But that hasn't really happened, <laughs> so... This ship is just insane, and it really comes down to the fire rate and the ability to slot IFHE, so then you pen 32 millimeters of armor. You just melt everything. The HE DPM is ridiculous on this thing. You even have more range base than a Des Moines does, right? That's something that Des Moines has issues with, right? Is you get all this DPM, but of course you do struggle with range a little bit and some floaty shells on the Des Moines as well. But oftentimes you just run range on the Des Moines and then you're pretty comfortable. But the Wooster has enough range that you don't have to run that. So you just gain extra DPM by the way of this pretty decent base range. And that allows you to run reload mod, which I'm running here. And of course with IFHE, it has been nerfed over time just because uh, the fires that you would get along with the pen is pretty insane. But honestly, it's still worth running in my opinion, at least for the way I like to play the game. And I value raw alpha damage over randomized dots. And considering the fire rate and how many shells you're gonna be hitting on people, personally, I think on average, you're gonna get fires anyway. And all that fire chance goes to waste as soon as you're hitting areas of the ship that are already on fire. Of course, you have a 0% fire chance if the section of the ship you're hitting already has a fire. That's my thought process at least, but that said, I think that both are good. You don't have to run IFHE, that's for sure. And honestly, there are several very good arguments that a lot of my friends have made to me that I should be running a non-IFHE build trying to go for more fires just because you pen battleship superstructures already and you pen 30 millimeters of armor, so that's most cruisers. So on battleships, it's very easy to hit superstructure anyway, so you don't really need it, but for me personally, I just like using the IFHE a little bit more. It gives me a little more flexibility to farm battleships and some of the ones that maybe have a little bit smaller superstructures. Georgia, of course, uh, <laughs> probably has one of the biggest superstructures in the game, so we don't need it necessarily on this flank, but this damage output is just ridiculous. You do have to get used to the lead, of course, right? Getting used to that is a little bit tricky just because the shells do tend to stay in the air for a long time, but it's nowhere near as bad as something like the Colbert, for example. <laughs> and as an added bonus, you do get higher caliber than something like a Colbert or a Smolensk, so at closer ranges, you're a pretty solid AP threat as well. But you don't really want to get into those close ranges. You're not a Des Moines, you don't have those heavy AP shells that are going to give you improved auto bounce angles. You're not really looking to take those fights. In fact, you usually lose to a Des Moines in a close range engagement. At longer ranges, I'd say a Wooster would win just because of the DPM advantage, but at uh, closer ranges, you gotta be careful, especially around Des Moines. So finding islands like this one, obviously we we're very fortunate that we had our destroyers come out and spot for us. So that is nearly 100K damage already. <laughs> this is gonna be a good game, guys. And honestly, this map is pretty much perfect for the Wooster just because of how many islands there are and that your shells can get over all of them. <laughs> it's really not that hard to make use of the islands on this map. It's very, very, very good for a ship like this from both sides. There's really good positions all around the map for something like the Wooster. Now, aiming behind islands is a little bit tricky. Uh, definitely consider something like the spotter plane Wooster to be a bit of a meme, but it would be useful in this situation, allowing me to get a little bit more precise with my aim. I am, of course, using my mini-map to aim, in case you're wondering. I'm not really looking at the screen ahead of me. I'm looking at the X on the mini-map, trying to use that to determine where I should place my shells. And we're finally getting smits in, and, um, yeah, just starting to do some more damage. I think something like the Wooster actually could be played open water as well. You don't have to use islands. The ship is maneuverable enough that you can get away with some open water, uh, gunboating, that kind of thing. The weird thing about this ship is the stepped citadel. It actually doesn't have a consistent citadel all the way to the back of the ship. The rear turrets or so, the citadel dives below water. So when you're aiming at a ship like this, you tend to need to aim towards the front part of the ship. Uh, the superstructure and the front turrets have a slightly above water citadel, but 
behind that, the rear turrets, you get a little bit below water. So that really helps you out a lot in situations where you're trying to dodge, you're trying to kite away. It makes it very difficult to actually hit the Citadel when you're kiting. Of course, pushing into a Georgia is certainly not recommended given he overmatches us everywhere, but he has pretty slow shells, so we can do some dodging here and try and get ourselves to the next island. Now, of course, I'm trying to get to that island right in front of me because the enemy team has to push into B or try and gain some ground somewhere. And of course, getting to the middle of the map as a insane damage dealer DPM ship is really, really strong. We just have to make it through this Georgia's, uh, this Georgia's fire, which is a little scary, admittedly, but we are trying to dodge as much as we can. We're slowing down, we're turning in, we're doing everything we possibly can to avoid shells when they're coming. And we're giving up DPM for that, but I think that is entirely worth it to try and dodge as many shells as possible. Georgia is doing a great job of leading, though. Um, he knows that I'm going to be dodging, so he's not leading to where my ship would be if I went in a straight line. It's something I talk about a lot in uh, my aiming video, which is basically a year old at this point. <laughs> that was a while ago that I made that one. But people are, even before that, I'm not saying I. this guy is doing what I said, obviously. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is it's sound advice to not shoot where somebody is going shoot where they're going to dodge to. Try and predict people. That's what I'm saying is something you should be doing, just like this George is doing a great job of at this point. And we're barely just sneaking past a lot of these shells. A little better RNG on his part, and we definitely, uh, definitely would have taken some more pain, a little more damage. But we make it to the island just fine. And to be, to be honest, pushing into a battleship is not what you want to be doing in a Wooster. Kiting them definitely, definitely works, but that kind of push is certainly scary. And we got a little bit lucky on that one. But now that we're here, my, what a good position this is, huh? We get the ability to pretty much cut off the entire map. So long as our team is able to hold and spot for us, I think we have a great opportunity to kill almost everyone. <laughs> Unfortunately, I d can't risk pulling out of here just because there's a thunder around. But this position, well, you can see how we're able to just lob shells over these islands. There's so many positions like this all around the game that it really enables a lot of these, well, low caliber, high DPM ships with pretty floaty shells to uh, be some of the best ships in the entire game. Of course, on maps like Ocean, it does get a little bit harder, but I actually haven't seen Ocean in an incredibly long time. So it's really rare to get scenarios like that. You're more often than not going to get islands that you can use. I am trying to get these over, but of course, we're a little bit too close to the sun, so we have to wait a little bit, but there are ships farther away, and of course, we can lob and get at those ones. Now, the Wooster, of course, would be better played in a division. This is a ship that scales incredibly well when you play it in a division, especially with a destroyer, for example. Someone who's going to smoke up or someone who's just going to spot for you, that kind of thing. It is really, really, really strong in those scenarios, but I often play this game solo, and even in solo play, I want to show that this ship can be incredibly good. This is oftentimes my go-to cruiser if I just want to farm damage. Even though there are better ships, maybe, that farm more damage theoretically, something like a Henry or Colbert or Des Moines, that kind of thing, I just find this consistent DPM, this consistent damage, that's very easy to use, easy to get over islands, is just good in more situations. I don't have to look for the right scenario of people pushing into me. I don't have to look for the right islands, that kind of thing. I just find this ship incredibly good across most maps and most situations in the entire game. So that's why I tend to, I don't know, go towards this thing when I'm trying to farm damage or I'm trying to uh, play a cruiser just to <laughs> torture some battleships, let's be honest. That's really what you're doing when you're playing some of these HE spamming cruisers. And what do we got? We have a Musashi. And this guy is gonna get torn up because Musashi, like Yamato, has a 32 millimeter upper belt armor. So of course, we're gonna shatter on the 57 millimeter deck. But as long as we're aiming for the 32 millimeter parts, the bow, the stern, upper belt, and of course the superstructure, we're gonna get some pretty insane damage. All we need is spotting, like I said, is if you can get someone in your division to spot for you, this thing is awesome. And of course, I mean, not recommending you uh, division with carrier players. We don't want to associate with those. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. But uh, 
is a small truth to that. <laughs> you can div with uh, carrier players, obviously, and do incredibly well just because the AA on this thing is really strong when you have defensive fire up. Of course, it's not going to be perfect all the time, but you're at least not going to be the first target of the enemy CB. That's for sure in a ship like this. In the old days, this ship, of course, would have shredded a ton of... Uh, the RTS carriers planes, full squads, entire strikes could not get through this thing. And uh, that was definitely used quite well back in when I was playing Kings of the Sea in RTS carrier days. We had a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> Trying to send people in, create all these anti-AA zones, anti-plane zones, that kind of thing. It worked really well. But now it is just decent AA. It's not as insane as it used to be. But still good. Still very good. And of course the damage output has not changed at all. So this Musashi getting absolutely roasted. We do have to be worried a little bit about his salvo here, but we're pretty angled, and of course battleships just suffer from horrible dispersions, so we're not really that worried. If he hits our belt armor, it's gonna bounce, or just overpen, like that. <laughs> and if he aims for our bow citadel, it's very unlikely he'll hit that, just because it's a battleship, right? So we're not terribly scared in that scenario, at least considering we can duck behind an island. I wouldn't want to sit out in front of this guy forever, but I can manage a single shot or two, that kind of thing. Taking out the Musashi now, we're up to 223,000 damage. We finally get our first kill. And we're still losing this game, pretty much, right? We're down on uh, ships. We're down on map position. We're down on spotting. We're up on points for now, but... Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not looking so hot. Our team is kind of penned in in a pretty rough spot, so we're probably going to lose our Freddy here soon. And of course, the Shima in a back in our backline is a very rough thing to deal with. I'm hoping to just support this Cossack. I'm not going to push out here. I'm looking for ways to impact the game a little bit more, get my damage output on a little bit easier. So I'm hoping this Cossack does dodge <laughs> the torpedoes. And I'm hoping he goes and spots the Shima. That's really what I'm looking for. Whenever you have DDs around on your team, on your flank, you do want to take a break from all that farming you're doing of battleships and try and help them win their fights. Because assuming they can spot for you, that kind of thing, you're definitely going to have more success in a lot of games. And speaking of the Shima in our back line, that is a double strike. <laughs> So now we're pretty much left alone with a Cossack for help, and he does spot the Shimakaze. So we need to try and help him with this fight, and unfortunately our radar is on cooldown. So we're going to try and blind fire, of course. This is something you should be doing. It's very annoying for DD players, but you should be trying to blind fire DDs as much as you can. Do as much damage as possible, just because they're so impactful. And well, there goes our Cossack. So now we officially are left alone. So solo warrior opportunity. Uh, I don't think so. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try and trick you guys. <laughs> this is a loss for sure. But we've got 223k, and I think a great showcase of what the Worcester is capable of. And now all that's left is to just YOLO out and try and get as much damage as we can. Here, I'm very much hoping that the entire rest of the enemy team is behind this island to my left. That's why I'm gonna try and hug the island close and try and take this 1v1 with the Thunderer. Again, the ship does take damage. You do get overmatched, but I mean, assuming you're wiggling and angling, it's gonna be really difficult for a battleship to Citadel you. But unfortunately, the Georgia actually stayed. He came back, so now we are definitely caught in a crossfire and we are definitely, definitely dead. But we're getting a lot of AP damage out before we do die. So that's 250k. We got, what was that, 20, 25k into that thunder before we died. That's pretty solid stuff, considering we only had to shoot him for like 20, 30 seconds, that kind of thing. Unfortunate loss, but hey, those happen, right? It's an online multiplayer game, and I'm not in a division. As far as the build that I'm running on the Wooster, uh, this is what it looks like at the moment. I am trying to get as much damage as I can. <laughs> so we're actually taking heavy HE, we're taking IFHE, like I talked about earlier. AR, Concealment, we're taking Consumables Enhancements, we're trying to get more time on that radar. It's a very strong thing to get on something that fires so quickly, right? It's a very long duration radar, and I am taking Incoming Fire Alert. It's nice for when you're really just tunnel visioned on farming a battleship, and somebody tries to cross map you, you just get that early warning. I think it's a bit of a gimmicky, <laughs> easy mode thing. I think it makes your life a little bit too easy, but hey, it's in the game, so you may as well take it, right? 
Now, of course, we are also taking some reload upgrades on our main guns and concealment again. Prop mod, I think this is very important considering you're generally using island cover and you're stationary a lot. You want to be able to accelerate quickly when you need to. I'm taking aiming systems mod because you're not the most accurate ship in the world. It is a cruiser, but you're not like a Zhao. You're not like Ragnar or Elbing, right? You're, you're, you got a bit of a rough dispersion every once in a while. May as well try and tighten that up as much as you can. Pretty standard build otherwise, honestly, taking radar. And we do miss out a little bit on the consumables, but I'm going to get superintendent when I get the points, right? So I only have 19 on this guy, so I have to wait for that. But for now, damage, 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 damage. That's what the goal is of this thing. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Actually, before I go, let me just show you what I meant. Um, there. There's your citadel. See how it steps down? And there's just, like, nothing here? That's what I meant. I guess it does go to this turret. But uh, if you're kiting, that's a whole lot of ship that the shell has to get through before it gets to your citadel even. So if you go stern away, it's possible the shell enters your ship and detonates here before it even reaches your citadel. That kind of thing. And, of course, if you reverse out, if you poke out uh, behind an island, let's say there's an island right here along this line, and you poke out, you reverse out, you can actually get your back two turrets off without risking taking citadels at all because there's no way an enemy's hitting that. <laughs> there's some little gimmicky things involved. I'm not sure why this citadel doesn't extend, but it's there, so you can abuse that a little bit. It definitely helps in your survivability a little bit, but again, the armor's nothing to write home about. Only 30 millimeter deck and 25 sides. So you're, you're getting overmatched, but as you saw, we were relatively tanky, assuming you're maneuvering properly and getting a little bit lucky as well. So that's the Wooster, a very strong ship and has continued to be so. I don't think its power level has decreased over time, really. It came into the game really good and it stays to be one of the best cruisers in the game. So thank you very much for watching, guys. and I hope you have a great rest of your day.